Yo 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 guys, what is going on? It is your boy Forge here and I am back again on my personal channel with another one of my career mode series episodes. This episode is number two. Um, I looked back on the comments and the like ratio on the uh, last one um, and you guys seem to really like the idea. Um, I've already been given some feedback uh, which is to play at Gibson um, in the centre back role instead of Chambers uh, because Gibson is apparently absolutely amazing and should be getting an upgrade. Um, so I'm taking your guys' advice and I'm putting uh, Gibson in centre back for the first game of the season um, against Stoke, uh, Stoke City. Um, and we've also got Masunga on the bench. So Stoke City at home, the Riverside Stadium. The first game in the Premier League this season for Middlesbrough. Let's see what happens. Alright there guys, opening game of the season. This is what it is all about. Middlesbrough versus Stoke City. Riverside Stadium. Everyone is going to be buzzed for this match. There we are then, the first kick of the Premier League for Middlesbrough. Balagang now, on this right side. The right back, cuts back, looks for the pass. The room to Gaston Ramirez. Gaston Ramirez is going to bag it and safe hands by Jack Butland in goal for Stoke. Does manage to get across and Wilfred Body is there. It's full to Agalkovic. Agalkovic goes for a shot but it is safe hands by Victor Valdez. We're going to whip the ball in now. It's a brilliant cross. Negrego! And Negrego puts it in the side netting. What a header that was! And honestly, I jumped up off my seat. I thought that was in the back of the net when I saw the net rumble. But it hits the side netting, and that is a shot off target by the Gallego. I now commit now. Looking for the ball to Wilfred Boggy. Wilfred Boggy pushing up on his left side. Very dangerously indeed. Tries to get the early ball in. Fabio is there, but it falls back to a man. And Stoke have scored somehow. Then Parsons got through our defence and Stoke have managed to get it through. Cameron the goal scorer. Let's just take another look at this. Wilfred Boggy in with the cross and it is headed to, I believe that, that is, I'm not quite sure. Then number 10, Arn Alkovic. And then back to Cameron and then Cameron manages to slot it in the left hand corner. I'm not quite sure what to think. Borough seriously needs to step it up in the second half to have any chance in the game. Fabio in the Fisher. Fisher looking for the rug of Fabio once again. Fabio goes down and that is an appalling tackle by Shakiri. That should be a yellow card and it is indeed going to be a yellow for the man Shakiri for that tackle. We have a corner here. Fisher delivering it. And it does get whipped in. Fisher, it falls to Fisher outside of the box. He's going to whip it in dangerously. Comes off from the post. And the Grego looks for the tackle once again. And doesn't manage to. What a chance that was for us. Off from the woodwork. It just goes to show how unlucky this game has been for the Borough side. Rudy Gusted looking for Adama. Adama now on his left side. He's still pushing on his left side. He's going to whip the ball in. It falls to the room. I think, I'm not quite sure who that was, but that was a brilliant goal, whoever it was. Oh my God, it was the room. Insane build up there, insane cross by Adama, and the room, out of nowhere, just pokes it into the center of the goal, beats uh, Butland in goal, and that is a brilliant way to level it up against Stoke. You see here, we're making a substitution now. Gaston Ramirez is coming off for the brand new signing. Charlie Musonga. Hopefully this guy can provide something in this game and hopefully make us break the dead break. Stoke City with a dangerous ball over to Argalkovic and falls to Imbula. And it is a great save by Victor Valdez. With a body in some dangerous area now. He does get a shot away and nearly enters the roof of the net. But Victor Valdez knew otherwise. And that is it guys. The full time whistle blows. Oh, I'm not quite sure what to think about that game, to be honest. I mean, one all isn't the worst result. We did get a goal back from going behind against Stoke. 
but we have got a realise that we did actually go behind and we need to sort that out. We can't go doing that against the big teams like Manchester United, Chelsea, Tottenham, Arsenal. Teams like that will not allow us to get a goal back. Finishes 1-0 Middlesbrough versus Stoke. See here we have a few of our inquiries back. Uh, Isaac Success has said that he has no interest in joining the club. Joshua King, on the other hand, has said 7 million will be enough to ensure him joining the club. So, we're going to go into the offer, we're going to bid 6 million and hope that they um, accept that because Josh King is a real stud in this game. And Southampton want 31 million for Gabby Adini. Now, he quite possibly is worth that, but I'm not too sure that we should be spending that much money. Uh, we're going to put in a bid of uh, 25 and just hope that uh, Southampton see that they are overpricing that player considerably. Troy Gini has said that they want 13 million for the um, very good. Troy Gini has said that he wants 13 million for him to leave the club. We're going to go ahead and ask if we could get him for 10. Because this man is honestly insane. And finally, Nathan Ake has said 6 million will be enough. Uh, for him to join the club, but we're going to put in an offer for five and hope that that is enough. And after all that, Southampton have accepted the offer for Gabby Adini, 25 million is a bargain for this guy. He wants 70 grand a week with a three year contract length, which really shouldn't be hard um, for him to even accept because we are going to give him what he wants. Also, Joshua King has accepted the offer. He wants 45 grand a week and a three-year contract length. We're going to offer him four, um, and we're going to give him an important 13 player. Chelsea have also accepted the offer for the young 21-year-old Nathan Ake, the centre-back, recently loaned out to Bournemouth, but recalled because he was on insane form. He wants 50 grand a week. We're going to give him his wage demands and a four year. Actually, we'll put in five year and we're going to give him an important first team player because I'm not sure he'll play every single match. Nathan Ake has also accepted his contract offer. We are going to go ahead and uh, we're going to stall that one for the moment because we need to make sure that we have enough for Gabby Adini because he is uh, going to be the main signing. Um, onto this career mode, so we're going to stall it for the moment and just double check that we do have enough. And Watford have also accepted the offer. We're going to put in a contract offer, but I'm not sure whether we will accept him because of his age. Um, but we will put in the offer and just see whether he accepts it. Go for a bit lower, 45 grand a week. Josh King has accepted his transfer offer of 9 million and 45 grand a week. We are going to go ahead and accept that offer for Joshua King. Another signing for Middlesbrough, the second signing of the entire career mode series, and it is the man, Josh King. Alright then guys, an away game against Sunderland, the rivals of Middlesbrough, the only change that we have made to the team is Josh King for Rudy Kisneg. So, hopefully the change pulls off Josh King on his debut, let's see what happens. Alright then guys, Sunderland versus Middlesbrough. At the stadium of light, Josh King's debut. Let's see what is in store for this middle for a side. Arsene found himself a bit of room in the back. Does go for a shot. And it is safe hands by Victor Malgaz. An insane save in actual fact. Let's just take another look at this. Canterbury goes for a shot. Does well in that sort of area. And it's a one-handed save by Victor Malgaz. Very desperate attempt. We're now pushing up 
Nicolego, you found yourself a lot of room here. He can cause major issues for this team. He's going to cut that look for the pass to Josh King. Josh King has found it. He goes down in the area. I'm not quite sure why that is not a penalty, but he does go down. And honestly, this referee needs to seriously open his eyes. I really hope that we get a replay of that because that was honestly an uh, insanely bad tackle. Agamo finds himself a bit of room, he seems confident here, he does go for a shot, and it does go wide. The half-time whistle, guys. Honestly, I don't know what to think about that half, nil-nil isn't exactly the worst score that could be, but it could certainly be a lot better. Get a few more goals, get a bit more support into them strikers, and I think we'll be alright. Second half now, kicked off by Middlesbrough in this north-east derby. Martin Garoon. Now, looking for the run of Negrego, who has been waiting very patiently on this left side. Negrego cuts back, looking for the passing of Fisher. Fisher doesn't manage to do much here. Passes out to Gaston Ramirez. Ramirez goes for a long shot. Josh King now. Josh King goes for a shot. And it is off from the goalkeeper's hands. What a build up of play there. What a chance that was for Joshua King. We are going to make a substitution now. Gaston Ramirez and Fisher coming off for Rudy Gusteg and Charlie Musunga. Hopefully something happens now and we can break this deadlock. Over the top to Negrego. Negrego, brilliant pass. He's being held back. Oh my. It just can't get any worse for this Middlesbrough team. We get very unlucky in very dangerous areas in fact. And now Sunderland pushing up. It's a brilliant save once again. My Vic and Valga is really keeping us in this game. Sunderland now pushing up. And they have gone for another shot. And oh my god, Vic and is honestly the star player of this match so far for me. The brilliant header out now to Negrego. Negrego doesn't manage to get a hold of it. Tries to win it back. He has got the space. He does go down. And Negrego has been just completely mullered there. Not even going to get a card. Negrego injured. Negrego comes back on and straight back into the action. Josh King now. On this right side. Josh King does try and get it through and he goes down as well. And Sunderland is still getting away with it. Josh King down injured. As well as Negrego. Now, the final chance of the game. Josh King with the ball over. Apparently it's offside. I honestly give up with this referee. He won't do anything in our favour. Look how pathetic that is. Out of all the injuries that we've... Oh, Negrego is definitely going to be out for a, a bit of the season. Which is not good news for us. Now Sunderland pushing up. This is their final chance for the game. The main foe with the ball in, Carsley doesn't manage to get there, and that is it, guys. Not the worst result that we could have had. We show fighting spirit, but just not enough. Honestly, I, I don't like to do this, but I am going to blame part of that on the referee. Certain decisions should have had, like, at least one penalty, and I don't think we went, like, any of the game getting a free kick at all. So... I mean, the referee is, like, considerably, like, in need to blame, but, oh, I don't even know. Sunderland nil, Middlesbrough nil. I'm honestly not happy. Doesn't feel that the move suits him. Player injured. Nicolaigo isn't a serious injury. Seven days, one week really isn't, um, a serious impact on the season, but it is still very annoying that he did get injured and the referee still didn't acknowledge that. And that is where we are going to end off the episode, guys. Two draws out of our first two games of the season. Really isn't bad. We remain unbeaten in both of them. And hopefully that carries on for the remainder of the season. Hopefully we get a few more goals, a few more wins. Um to make things a bit more entertaining because I know this episode really isn't going to be uh, very fun filled um, and I am sorry about that but I can't help the way that the team plays um, so yeah let me get let me know what you guys uh, think about the um, the games and what you guys think about the episodes uh, so far of the series um, also let me know what you guys think about the um, 
findings that I've made, whether you agree with them, whether you think I could have gone for someone else. Um, and just the sort of to uh, let me know whether I should sign Nathan Ake, because it is looking quite clear that we need to straighten up at the back in some way. Um, so that may result in Gibson coming off, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm just playing him because I was advised to by you guys. So, um, yeah, that's been about it, guys. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like. Comment down below um, all the stuff that I've just said, uh, pretty much. Um, just reply to all that. Um, and subscribe if you are new. Turn on my notifications, that means you will never miss uh, another one of these um, Karimo videos ever again. And it's been your voice, and I will see you guys in a bit. Peace.